Hi friends, here is my presentation on found objects and their associations. I want you to think about what associations found objects may carry with them. Maybe you have some, maybe it's obvious. Maybe you need to dig a little deeper and do some research on what the associations the object might have. They could be emotional, they could be cultural, and they could be narrative. Take the teddy bear, for example. Teddy bears were originally made by a company named Stief in Germany. They were designed in 1880, but it wasn't until 1902 when a story was released about President Theodore Roosevelt and how he had, blood, had people bludgeon a bear, tie it to a tree so that he could shoot it and take it home as a trophy. The bears were then created for a toy fair in 1903 as a political statement. And in 1906, they were officially started into production and makers were allowed to use the name Teddy, Teddy's Bear was the first name, um, to identify the new toy. Since then, teddy bears have been used by plenty of sculptors sometimes for their childlike associations, sometimes in this case, this uh, settee by the Campara brothers as a literal cushion. Um, Jeff Koons, of course, has used teddy bears or bear-like imagery, childlike bear imagery. And Takashi Murakami has used bears. Objects have associations and artists have reactions to them. On this page, you can see a lot of different links to um, artists who are using upcycling and repurposing. I'll let you explore when you get it, but be sure not to miss Benjamin Von Wong's Strawpocalypse project. The material message that you find can be used for good or just for commentary, or simply for its beauty. In 2016, during the Syrian refugee crisis, Ai Weiwei made a number of these installations. This was the first one done in Berlin of 14,000 discarded life vests from Syrian refugee, refugees risking their lives to get from Syria to Greece. Over 400 refugees had died at that point. And Ai Weiwei, being who he is, decided that people needed to pay attention. And one of the symbols of these deaths for him were the life vests that did little to protect the vulnerable people trying to escape a worse fate in their own country. Objects throughout history have been used this way in museums. Museum curators and installation designers have used objects in a way to tell their story in many impactful museum installations. Ai Weiwei took this idea to another level, but the Holocaust Museum in DC has done a very similar thing with their display of shoes found from liberated concentration camps after World War II in Germany. And then of course, there is simply beauty. There's nothing simple about beauty, but the aesthetic attraction to an object can be utilized to make art. These guys right here are blurring the line between 2D and 3D. Adam Hillman on the right is someone who makes these beautiful arrangements and does these really interesting geometric patterns with various found objects. But he also sells prints of these arrangements rather than 
the work itself. Emily Blinko on the left is actually a photographer and these prints are for sale on her website. Then we have someone who is taking the objects just for their aesthetic value and elevating them from a mundane thing, an everyday object, to something transformative. On the left, you have an image that is a sculpture she created using plastic cups, creating a hanging cloud with a lighting element behind it that is truly magical. And on the right, you have mammoth stacks of blank index cards creating man-made or woman-made stalactites or mountains in a gallery space. So it's up to you. You get to decide. Do you want to be an arranger of everyday things? Do you want to elevate the mundane to truly beautiful? Are you interested in exploring what happens when you make something out of a utilitarian everyday object like Anne Carrington, who sculpted this arrangement from spoons and serving spoons? Or do you want to use your materials in a much more impactful way? Do you want to take their content and really drive a point home? The choices are up to you. Think carefully about what options you have and maybe make your own statement. It can be personal, it can be political, it can be environmental, it can be really anything you want. It can be about beauty or it can be about purpose. Just be sure that you know what the power of your choices can do.